Hello YouTube, what's happening? My name is Trevor Ursulescu, owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. So today I am going to be doing a little series, this is video number one, in which I'm going to be building one of these 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air sedan model kits to help one of our Monster Hobbies model car garage mechanics, who's a beginning modeler. Now I've been building model car kits for over 40 years, as well as many other types of model kits like wargaming figures and science fiction and airplanes and military. And I've learned a lot from my father, my uncle, and friends, as well as through the Model Car Club, through getting a degree in auto body collision repair and learning about painting as well. And I find that the best place to actually start when you are a beginning modeler or even advanced modelers wishing to brush up on things is the Model Kit Supplied Instruction Sheet. All of them have in some way, shape or form the basic assemblies and what you need to do in order to build the model kit. And a lot of them are highly detailed with a lot of instructions and others are very simple and uh, not so detailed. What I've done is I've taken all these and read through a whole ton of them and I've compiled every little thought together to make this video so that you get a good understanding of basically how to put your model together. So let's go down to our bench and begin this video. Now in this series, we're going to be helping our good friend Belinda build her 1955 Chevrolet Bel Air sedan. I have the same kit. This is the Millennium Edition. It doesn't really matter because our general theory is to build this model correctly. Now just for everyone's benefit, I'm going to add in the basic instructions here with our advanced instructions in this video just to give you a more comprehensive look on how to build your model car kit. Before you begin to assemble your model kit, carefully study and understand the entire instruction sheet. This will help you familiarize yourself with the parts location as you proceed. Compare the parts in the box to the instruction sheet to make sure you have received all the parts that you will need to build the model. Each plastic part is identified by a number. This number will appear in the instruction sheet and on the parts tree. In the assembly drawings, some parts will be marked with a star, some will have a triple digit number, or some will even say chrome or have a C to indicate which parts in the model are chrome plated plastic. Read the entire instruction booklet before deciding which version you wish to build. Now in this AMT 1955 Chevrolet Nomad kit, which I intend to build later on with Belinda, there are actually three building options. First up we have the stock version of the model kit. This is how the model would come out of the factory back in 1955. Next up we have a custom version which you could also build in the Nomad with the full roof or cut the Nomad roof off and build this as an El Camino. So you want to make sure that you know exactly what's going on in here so that you don't confuse up your parts. And the final version of this model is the drag racing version and this way you are adding in the bigger wheels so you need to cut out this wheel opening for example. You're going to not use the grill but use the fuel tank instead. You could also build this as a drag racing El Camino. So again study up all the instructions and get familiar with which version of the model you want to build and what your ideas are. Maybe even write them out on a piece of paper or something so you can follow along. But do that before you actually put a knife or anything to this model and begin building it. Research the real car that you wish to build as a model kit. You can find examples in books, on the internet, through dealer sales brochures, classic car shows, or even on the street. You can even find useful information in old car repair manuals that you may not find in internet research. Planning your job carefully will give you a one-of-a-kind showpiece. Your model kit is molded from the finest high-impact styrene plastic. Do not bend or twist parts off the parts tree like I just did there, because you are likely to tear them where they're attached to the tree. Use a sharp hobby knife, hobby saw, or even a pair of side cutters to remove the parts from the tree. Use a knife, sandpaper, or file to remove parting lines and flash on parts if necessary. 
Files are also good for removing the clip-off points from the parts tree. Trim excess plastic and check for fit of parts before cementing. Prior to cementing parts together, be sure to test fit them without glue in order to assure proper location, alignment, and also check for excess flash that may occur along parting lines. Use only paints, cements, and putties which are specifically formulated for styrene. We recommend the use of liquid polystyrene cement be applied with a fine brush. No, no, Danny, the fine brush. Oh, sorry. Because the cement will only adhere to bare plastic, it is necessary to remove any paint or plating from the area to which the cement is to be applied, and be careful not to smear cement on exposed surfaces. Read all glue and cement labels and warnings carefully before starting. Some of these may actually help you in case you get the chemical in your eye or anything else like that. Use cement sparingly, or a sloppy job will result. Any unused parts may be discarded or saved for other future projects. For the best possible finish, your kit should be painted even if it's molded in color. Parting lines and glue joints should be sanded or filled prior to painting. If you wish to use sandpaper to remove seam lines and other imperfections, I recommend starting at 320 grade, going up to 400 grade, and then finishing off with 600 grade, being very careful not to sand off trim and scripts from your model car kit. The reason why we start at 320 and not anything lower is that the styrene is susceptible to scratching and anything lower than 320 will put in some very deep scratches in the plastic which will be really really hard to smooth out as you go up through the other progressive sandpapers. Because paint has a tendency to draw away from sharp edges, these edges should be lightly filed or scraped with your number 11 hobby blade. Use filler putty designed for plastic to fill small gaps that may occur between parts and to blend contours. The best way to get absolutely dead straight body panel contours is to cross sand. So what you want to do is first sand at a 45 degree angle one way and then sand again at a 45 degree angle the other way. This ensures that the panel lines end up being very very smooth. During assembly, you may note that the recommended color is stated after the part name. If you wish to paint your model, various sub-assemblies and components should be painted before any parts are assembled or attached. Some model car companies include these wonderful color availability charts for the model kit that you are building. Others do not. So always make sure you research the colors before you actually start choosing a color to paint your model with. For better paint and decal adhesion, wash your model kit parts in mild soapy detergent water. This will help remove any oils from your fingerprints or mold release agents that are at the factory. Rinse these parts off and allow them to air dry. You never want to dry your model kit parts with a paper towel, toilet paper, or tissue paper because the lint from the paper towel will stick onto the model through static electricity and then when you paint the, your model, it'll have all that dust stuck in there. Use a tack rag to remove any lint, dust, or sanding material. Now you can mount your model car onto a cardboard box or an aluminum can or something like that while you're spray painting so you have a good handle to hold your car with so that you're not touching the body as the paint is going on and so that when your car is drying you can actually just set it down something like this and it's fully supported on the box down below thus preventing the model from touching the tabletop and getting dust on it. Paint should be applied evenly in several thin coats rather than one heavy coat. So you want to actually swing with your wrist and not swing like this because here you'd actually get a thin contact, a very thick contact, and then it thins out again. Whereas here it is uniform all the way across. You want to keep your hand a good 10 inches away from the item you're going to be painting in order to prevent runs, drips, and sags in the paint. Here are two sequences of spraying a real car that auto body painters use. The first method is to spray paint starting from the roof, move down to the hood, come across the side panels, then go to the other side of the car, move along from the front side panel 
all the way to the back and then come up on the trunk lid. The second method is to start from the door panel, move across to the front fender, come across on the hood, go down this side, come up onto this hood, then go around to the other side of the car, move along here, go across the trunk lid and come back here to connect. Now because a model car is a lot smaller than a real car, you can actually spray a broader spray pattern than what they can do in the real car spray booth. So I still follow the same principles. What you want to do is pretend that you are the rain. So you spray paint from the top down first. So I would spray paint this entire area. And then I'm going to turn to the front of the car and spray paint along the front. And then turn it this way, spray paint down this side panel. Rotate it this way, spray the back. Rotate it once again and spray this side. Then I'm going to tilt it forward and down and spray paint under here down below on the inside and then I'm going to turn it this way and spray this down here on the inside and then spray along the back right in there and then I'm going to turn it this way again and spray inside this inside panel and then that way your car will be fully painted and look just like the real thing. The first type of paint you want to spray on your model is a primer. The purpose of primer paint is to produce the best adhesion for the top coat paint and the best protection to the plastic underneath. This image here shows the theory, your top coat, your primer and the plastic underneath. Always check on the label for drying times so that you will know when to apply the second coat. Each coat of paint should be allowed to dry thoroughly before the next one is applied. Also, each coat of primer and each coat of top coat should be wet sanded with a variety of sandpapers except for the final coat using number 1500 wet or dry sandpaper which is slightly damp. Be careful not to sand off any fine details while you are wet sanding. Always make sure you use compatible based paint over top of your primer coat. For example this can says not to use lacquer paints or paints containing strong solvents over trim clad primer. Allow paint to dry thoroughly before handling the model car parts. Use a very fine brush to touch up edges if it's necessary. When painting a two-tone body, the lightest color should be applied first. Use painter's masking tape or frosted scotch tape to mask off the areas of your model car that you do not want to have painted. You can also further protect your model car by putting in the protected areas inside these sandwich bags and then attaching the sandwich bags with the tape to the car body. Now after the second coat of paint is dry to the touch, the masking tape can be removed. What you want to do is carefully roll the tape backward like this onto itself to remove it because if you just pull it straight up this way, you run the risk of chipping all the paint along that edge whereas the nice smooth roll will pull it back nice and evenly. If you wish to add decals to your model kit, usually 9 times out of 10, the instructions for your decals are printed on the back of the decal sheet. You can use a product like this Walther's Solvaset decal setting solution, which you apply on top of your decals after you have applied them to your model car, and this Solvaset will actually let the decal sit down nice and flat on the surface of your model. You can also apply a gloss coat to your model kit after you have applied the decals. A gloss coat will help even out the edges between the two colors as well as set the decals. So that basically sums up all our information on building model cars from our instruction sheets and from our extra reference material and my automotive refinishing book that I used in auto body collision repair. And now that you have a thorough understanding of the tips and texts from all those sources on how to build our model car kit, we can now go on to part two of this series where we will get to start building our Millennium Series model car. And that will sure be good. And I really hope that our good friend Belinda will learn a lot from this lesson as well as be looking forward to when we actually start to open up the kit and look at our plastic parts and start assembling our first little sub-assembly. 
So until next time, everybody, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. If you want to see our current model car kits, check it out at www.monster-hobbies.ca, and I'll leave a link for that in the description below, as well as a clickable link somewhere here on the pages. Don't forget to check out our other great tips and text videos, and uh, hit that join button, and you'll get your names in the final credits. So until next time, everybody, Happy model building.